Dragon Slayer Codex. My first video got plenty of excitement, which is just amazing, and I cannot thank you all enough. This is the second video in the series, and will be the start of the Dragon Profiles, where I will dive into a particular dragon species and all the details that go with it. Today, I'm going to share with you the first species of dragon we will cover, the Scarlet Lasher. This species is found along the interior of the eastern landmass, in a biome known as the Great Grass. This locale is distinguished by its prairie and savanna flatlands, wide biodiversity, and fluctuating temperatures. Some things to note. An interchanging dry and wet season. The inland nature of the Great Grass means it is susceptible to drought during the summer months, cracking the dirt and testing the thirst of its inhabitants. Animals are less active during this time, meaning a very well-prepared slayer can traverse relatively unbothered. However, they may soon find their own supplies become desirable loot for even the most passive of beasts, becoming a walking target in the process. In the fall, the dry, low-pressure winds of the dune sea to the south mingle with the cool, high-pressure air of the northern ice to create monsoons above the great grass, quenching the thirst of the animals within. The open territory of this land makes it difficult for human habitation despite the abundance of resources. Past attempts have been ransacked clean of any and all supplies by the dragons within. As such, a traveler will find no settlements within the depths of this continent. It remains largely unexplored due to this reason alone, and traders who have survived the journey whisper great and wonderful tales of the riches found in its depths, as well as the monsters. The topography of the Great Grass is the flattest in the entire known world. One can see for miles in any direction they please. Although, so can the Scarlet Lashers, and flat land means there is no cover. Scarlet Lashers are, as one can assume by their name, red, visible from far away to a slayer, but not so to their mammalian quarry, who, with their poor color vision, see only a muddy green blending in with the grasses. Lashers stand at two and a half men tall, and, assuming the figure here is at 182 centimeters each, the lasher stands at 6.37 meters tall. Such height offers it a visual advantage while walking among the tall grass. It is much, much longer, approximately 15 meters in length. The constant lashing and writhing make it difficult to measure for certain. As for weight, it clocks in at a maximum of one ton. A slayer can easily forget that getting accidentally stepped on is just as cruel a fate as any dragonfire. The name Lasher stems from their most infamous feature, a long whip-like tail. Their primary tool, this tail is used in attack, hurting prey with its dreadful crack and in communication with one another. The scales armoring the tail are also infused with mineral iron from their diet, providing further strength and durability. Trying to cleave it off is known as a rookie's mistake. Atop their head lies a notable cask, a resonating organ which amplifies sound to a lethal degree. Their skull sports an elongated cranium indicative of a high intelligence, as evidenced in their complex communication and hunting methods. A small prey specialist, the Scarlet Lasher prefers its meals weak and inferior to itself. They may be seen patrolling their territories along regular paths before suddenly switching it up to get the edge on their victims. 
A lifestyle of pursuing small, clever prey has shaped the lasher into a remarkably intelligent animal, and scouting parties have observed them digging traps and pitfalls in which to chase their quarry. Slayers have described hunts to feel more like a game of cat and mouse, where tight coordination is needed to avoid the whip crack of that dreadful tail. This species is diurnal, preferring high visibility from which to survey its territory. Females are known to be more nomadic than males, and follow large herds of the grassy armorhead, a species of derived boar, and part of a highly successful lineage in this world. Soaring far enough behind is not to startle them, until it is time to hunt. One. Being a small game specialist, humans are a prime fit for its natural diet. Towns on the fringes of the great grasp whisper tales and poems of caution about this dragon, etching the red tail motif into a local cultural iconography. Scarlet lashers are a very showy species and use several methods to flaunt themselves. A male lasher begins courtship by claiming a lone standing tree as his home territory, something sturdy and strong. Then he proceeds to strip it of all its branches and leaves, fragile twigs or other obscuring plant matter. Once it is bare as bone and thoroughly scent marked, he, much like the shrike of earth will skewer his prey on the branches of this new altar like grotesque decorations notable slayers humble farmers and royalty alike will sometimes be found amid the prey strewn about the tree to the horror of all during this decorating phase the lasher will not eat for up to two weeks as a show of his endurance once complete he will use the resonating chamber atop his snout to let out a piercing call, one heard for hundreds of miles. Arriving females are treated to a show. He will pick the corpses off of the tree and fling them towards her high in the air. And she will test their freshness, size, and quality, as well as his own fitness by the distance he throws these corpses, the volumes he shrieks, in the time he spent fasting. If successful, they will mate, and she will lay a clutch of 12 eggs at the base of the tree. Lasher eggs are large and hard-shelled. Development takes upwards of 11 months, where the shell grows continuous layers for protection. You can identify a scarlet lasher's egg by their orange and yellow luster. These shells are highly prized as valuables in the towns of North Bay and Wood, found along the perimeter of the great grass. Once hatched, the youngling, called a whelp, emerges bright green and very slender, resembling the long strands of grass they hide among while their parents forage. Initially, lasher whelps were misidentified as a separate species, simply dubbed a grass dragon and excursions to collect specimens for research were launched. Rather quickly did the scholars learn of the grass dragon's true identity when the furious, crimson adults descended from the sky. After several years with their parents, the young dragon will leave their home territory in search of their own tree to call their own and decorate with a horde of flesh and bone. Should you encounter this sly dragon while out on the field, you should be aware of its strengths and weaknesses. The lasher has range and attack speed. You will never see that tail coming. Intelligence. The beast will attempt to lure you into traps of its own making. Cruelty. This intelligence has given the lasher a particular mean streak even among the dragons. Pair work. They will hunt together while raising young. The lasher requires, however, open spaces to best use its abilities, thus is claustrophobic. Try to use a bola to incapacitate it. 
The very wit that makes it so dangerous is also quite easy to distract. A dragon horn crafted from one's nasal cask will do well to divert its attention. The skin between the base of its neck and chest is also particularly thin. While hard to hit, this should be your focus. When on the field. Knowing how to identify a dragon species by its tracks or its silhouette from a distance is absolutely vital. The wing shape of the lasher is broad, pointed, and shows considerable slotting on the membrane of the fourth digit. There are three free claws on each wing, the third acting as a thumb while on the ground. The tracks are even more important. A walking lasher will always leave behind evidence of its long, sweeping tail, much like a snake's track. The footprint itself is long, sporting four visible claw imprints. Scarlet Lashers are dangerous beasts that seek out settlements to lure slayers to their own demise. Always pursue one in a group, as it would only love for you to face it alone. Now that you have learned the ways of the Scarlet Lasher, you are ever closer to becoming a fully-fledged dragon slayer. Thank you to my patrons so much for making this possible. You are the pillar of support which allows me to do this. If you would like to join the ranks to receive merch, a patron disc discord server, early peeks at my process, and new videos, please click the link in my description. Thank you. Until next time.